Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. Thank you again for stopping by. We are going to start off this lesson with the question, what are intercepts? And we are going to frame this question in terms of finding an x-intercept and finding a y-intercept of a given function. So an x-intercept refers to where a function crosses the x-axis, that is the horizontal axis. So let's go ahead and look at a few points on that x-axis. We have points at negative 6, positive 2, and positive 7. Now in terms of coordinates, that orange point at negative 6 would have coordinates negative 6, 0. So the x-coordinate is negative 6, and the y-coordinate is 0. For that light blue point, the coordinates would be positive 2, 0. Again, x is 2, y is 0. And for the light green point, the coordinates would be 7, 0. Now notice that these three points on the x-axis have a y-coordinate of 0. And this is actually true for any point on the x-axis, for any x-intercept. The x-coordinate will be different, but the y-coordinate will always be 0, since we never rise up or down. Okay, we move left or right, so the x-coordinate will change, but the constant here is that the y-coordinate is always equal to 0. Now let's take a look at a y-intercept. Now this is the vertical y-axis here, okay? And we'll, again, we'll look at three different points on the y-axis. Okay, so we have the first point is our pink point, which is at 0, 7. Our blue point has coordinates 0, 2, and our orange point has coordinates 0, negative 5. Now in this case, notice that all of the x-coordinates are equal to 0 for any y-intercept. And again, this is true for any point on the y-axis, okay? Since it does not move left or right, the x-coordinate is always 0, and it is the y-coordinate that will be different. So now we can quickly visually recap this concept by remembering that when we have an x-intercept, the y-coordinate will always be 0, and when we have a y-intercept, the x-coordinate will always be 0. <laughs> cool. So now let's go ahead and extend this understanding to finding the intercepts of a linear function, in this case, f of x equals 3x minus 6. Now we can replace f of x with y equals, again, they both mean the same thing. This will make it easier to work with here. Now this is an mx plus b form. So I can start with that negative 6, that y-intercept, and plot that point, and then use that slope of positive 3 to rise up 3 units, run over to the right 1, and I can use that slope to build the line and graph it. And based on my graph now, we can see that our x-intercept is at 2, 0. That's where the graph hits the x-axis. And our y-intercept will be at 0, negative 6, since that's where the function crosses the y-axis. So we could just graph it and find the intercepts that way for this particular function. Now you also may have noticed that for a linear function, that constant, that negative 6, represents the y-intercept. So it should make sense that our y-intercept was at the point 0, negative 6, and that those negative 6s match up. So now I want to move on and show you how to find an x and y intercept for a given function algebraically. So again, it's always helpful to rewrite the function in y equals form, which we have already done. Now let's start off by finding that x-intercept. Again, we're going to do this algebraically. I know we already know the x and y intercept, but we want to prove it without using a graph. So for the x-intercept, I know that my y-coordinate has to equal 0. So what we can do is replace y in the original equation with 0, again, because the y-coordinate has to equal 0. And now I can solve for x to find my x-intercept. So I want to get x by itself, and I can do this by first adding 6 to both sides. That will cancel out the negative 6 on the right side of the equation. On the left side, 0 plus 6 is just 6. Now we have 6 equals 3x. We just divide by 3 on both sides. That will cancel out the 3's on the right side, and now x is by itself, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. So we can conclude that our x-intercept is at 2, 0. Again, the x-coordinate is 2, and the y is always 0. Now for the y-intercept, we know that the x-coordinate is always 0. So now I'm going to replace the x in the original equation with 0, 
and solve for y. We want to find what that y value is. This is pretty easy to do now once we substitute, okay? Since 3 times 0 is just 0, so that'll just disappear. And what we are left with is y equals 0 minus 6, which is just negative 6. So again, that helps us to find the y-intercept with coordinates 0, negative 6. So now let's go ahead and find the x and y-intercepts for a quadratic function. And if we think about what a quadratic function looks like in terms of a parabola, we need to understand why a quadratic can possibly have two x-intercepts, while a linear function can only have one. So keeping this in mind, let's go ahead and find the x and y-intercepts for this quadratic. So let's start off by finding those x-intercepts for this quadratic. So to do that, first thing we do is rewrite the function in y equals form. So now we have y equals x squared plus 5x plus 6. And remember that the y-coordinate is always 0, so I'm going to replace y with 0 and then solve for x. Now notice that this is a quadratic function. It is 0 being equal to a trinomial. And when we factor trinomials, it's possible to get two different values for x. So we have to factor this trinomial x squared plus 5x plus 6, which should factor out to x plus 3 times x plus 2. And when we set those equal to 0 and solve, we get a solution of x equals negative 3 and a second solution of x equals negative 2. So we have two x-intercepts here, one at negative 3, 0, and one at negative 2, 0. And now we're ready to find the y-intercept. So again, we rewrite it, y equals x squared plus 5x plus 6. And remember that for y-intercepts, the x-coordinate is always 0, so we will replace x with 0. Every x in the function we replace with a 0, and then we can just evaluate. So 0 squared is just equal to 0. 5 times 0, pretty easy, just equals 0. And we just bring down that plus 6. And now 0 plus 0 plus 6 evaluates to just 6. So we can conclude that y equals 6 and that our y-intercept is going to be 0, positive 6. So as long as you understand the concepts behind x-intercepts and y-intercepts, you can apply this procedure to finding those intercepts for pretty much any function. So just keep that in mind as you're moving forward, and uh, we'll continue to explore this concept at a more advanced level in future lessons, and we'll catch you guys next time. All right, so that's it for that lesson. Hope you found it helpful, and if you did, please click that link below and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We add new lessons every week. We don't want you to miss out. And also, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to comment down in the comment section below. We respond to every single comment. I promise you will respond, even the mean ones. Okay, but let's just try to keep it nice. Those ones are always a lot more fun to read. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time. See ya.